are reports at this hour that Donald Trump may have finally made a decision on a running mate. And we'll have reaction and insight coming up on this edition of Five on Two. Yeah, but first, the weather. Our big focus again tonight. A flash flood warning now in effect, and more rain is to come. So let's check in first thing with Chief Meteorologist Brian Davis, keeping an eye on it all for us. Yeah, thanks, Mark Katie. We are tracking a flash flood warning uh, right across the central part of Montgomery County through the Dayton area extending over into western Greene County. This area is seen in some locations an inch, maybe even an inch and a half to two inches of rain, and may see another uh, half inch or less of additional rainfall across this region. So for the evening commute, watch out for standing water on the roads. Remember, you don't want to drive through flooded roadways. You don't know the depth of the water, if the road's even there, uh, and that is always a hazard. Flood advisories surround that area from Preble County right on up to just south of Green uh, Springfield, north uh, sections of Green County, and there could be some more heavy rainfall, especially northern Green County, southern Clark County, as we go through about the next 30 minutes. You can see the heavy rains are moving out of Montgomery County now, but the northern sections of Green County up around Yellow Springs extending northward to just south of Springfield, seeing the heavy precipitation, and that all continues to slide eastward. So the greatest threat of additional flooding will be up in this area here, uh, the upper reaches of the Little Miami River, uh, perhaps uh, some of Massey Creek catching some of the heavier rains that will be running off as well as we go into the evening here. Let's take a look at the uh, situation right now. That flash flood warning in effect until 630, but you can see our band of rain continuing to push to the east with the drier conditions coming in from the northwest. That's the good news. We have some better weather on the way, and I'll tell you about it in the Storm Team 2 forecast. Okay, Brian, thanks so much. At the top of the show, I said weather again, top of mind for us tonight. That's because a lot of people are still cleaning up after last night's strong line of storms that pushed across the Miami Valley. There were downed trees, buildings damaged, Eden hit especially hard. So, 2 News reporter Jordan Bowen focusing our team coverage there. Well, crews in Eaton started working on the cleanup as early as Wednesday night. Some of the biggest damage was reported near Lexington Road and Barron Street. There, the Speedway gas station saw minor damage to one of their glass doors, which shattered from the storm. Just down the road, multiple tree limbs came down near one local business. City crews have since removed most of the limbs covering the road along Lexington. One resident I spoke with says he spent most of the morning and the afternoon cleaning up what was left. It's that time of year and storm time, the stuff happens. Some of these trees are older and they just, they don't stand a lot. And I just checked and Eaton officials tell me about 80% of the damage is cleaned up. They say they'll spend the rest of today picking up any limbs residents leave for them along the street. Jordan Bowen, 5 on 2. Also tonight, the Greene County Sheriff's Office needs your help identifying the skeletal remains of a woman found in Spring Valley Township back on May 1st. Two News reporter Chalisa Gordon live in Xenia with new information about that search. You guys, it's pouring down, raining out here, but the Greene County Sheriff's Office is desperate to find clues and new leads in identifying the, the woman found in Greene County. After months of DNA testing and working through clues, Greene County authorities say they are no closer to learning the identity of the remains found in the wooded area in Spring Valley Township. Through the course of the investigation, uh, it was determined with the assistance of a forensic anthropologist, the uh, remains belong to a white female uh, with an age range of 25 to 50 years old. Uh, her height was 5 foot 5 to 5 foot 10. Uh, there were some clothes found at the scene uh, with the remains. A man mushroom hunting found the remains in a wooded area near Elam Road on May 1st. Officials say the body was left out in the elements for three months to a year before being found. At this time, she does not match any known missings. One neighbor I spoke with recalls the day the body was found. Yeah, it was a little disturbing, actually, um, being so close to our property. And um, not really seen any. Setting that the remains have not been identified. Surely somebody's out there missing one of their family members, and it's kind of sad that someone could be missing for three months and they just can't they can't find them or find the family members um, to come forward and report their loved one missing. Officials say DNA nor dental records have helped identify the victim. Very surprising, but I guess if somebody's never reported missing, then um, the DNA can only go so far if you don't have any DNA to match with the body they found. 
Anyone with information is asked to contact the Greene County Sheriff's Office. Coming up at 6, I'll tell you why there might be a child out there missing their mother. Charlisa Gordon, 5 on 2. A celebration of life held today in Dallas for Sergeant Michael Smith. He was one of the five Dallas police officers shot and killed in the line of duty on Thursday night. Officers from across the country as well as Canada attended this service. Officer Smith was an Army veteran and served the Dallas PD for 28 years. Following the service, a funeral procession took Smith to his final resting place at a nearby memorial park. To another funeral now, this one in St. Paul, Minnesota. Philando Castile laid to rest today as well. He was shot and killed by an officer during a traffic stop last Wednesday. Castile's casket was carried to the cathedral in a horse-drawn carriage, and family members hugged each other and cried before the pallbearers carried the casket inside for the service. Donald Trump is about to announce his choice of a running mate. The official announcement will be made in New York at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning, but the speculation is running rampant tonight. According to a report on the political website Roll Call, a source says that Trump will choose Indiana Governor Mike Pence as his running mate. It cites a Republican with direct knowledge of the decision. So take that for what it's worth. Joining us now to talk about it, Cedarville University Director of Political Studies, Dr. Mark Caleb Smith. Nothing official yet, but things looking very much like Pence from Indiana. Your thoughts on him as a choice? It's a conventional choice, which mm -hmm. is interesting, I think. It's a safe pick. It's someone that would appeal to the right wing of the party, which is where Trump has struggled. It's an experienced politician, which Mr. Trump is not, clearly. Uh, it's someone that's socially conservative, which Mr. Trump is not. And so it's a very conventional choice for an unconventional candidate. I have a lot of friends and family in Indiana. I grew up in Indiana. A, a lot of folks in the Hoosier State are not big Mike Pence fans, and they tell me he would have struggled to be reelected re as governor of that state. Yeah, I mean, Mr. Pence has this reputation as being quite conservative, but as governor, he's made some choices that has rankled fiscal conservatives as well as social conservatives. If you remember from last summer, the Religious Freedom Restoration Act in Indiana was a national news story. Mm -hmm. He backed down from that, which brought him a lot of ire from conservatives. And so he's not as popular as he once was. Will that affect him as vice president? Probably not. But he is a hardcore conservative, and that may be no the question. big plus. And there seems to be some chemistry uh, between the two men. It looks like Trump's family is playing a big role in this choice, and I guess they like him too. Uh, it's good. And Mr. Trump obviously wants someone he can interact with. They're going to be on the campaign trail for hours on end. He also wants someone that he could trust to become president. You know, at minimum, this person should be ready to step into the office if the worst thing happens. And Mike Pence fits that, I think. Yeah, good point. As far as the other possible options, of course, the names being kicked around. Uh, Newt Gingrich, probably number one. Right. And there's some others being kicked around as well. Why, Chris Christie, I guess, also on right. that list. Right. Why do you think maybe they're not the choice at this point? My guess is the goal is that Mr. Trump's trying to appeal to sort of elite conservatives and, f and donors and office holders. People have been really reticent so far to support his candidacy. Mr. Gingrich and Mr. Christie would not fit that very well, I don't think, but Pence does. And so a very safe selection and probably good for the future for Donald Trump. Yeah, the thing with guys like Gingrich and Christie, yes, they have experience, but as we've right. learned recently in politics, the longer you've been in politics, the more baggage you have, and that can be a problem. That's right. Mike Pence is a fresh face. He'll basically introduce himself to the world tomorrow for most people, and we'll see how it goes. All right, next week's the big week for the GOP up in Cleveland. It's going to be, it's been a campaign unlike any we've seen, and it makes me think it's going to be a convention unlike any we've seen. Why not? Sure. Every, everything has been remarkable so far. That's exactly right. So what do you expect? I mean, it's, I, uh, the, the speakers are sure. finally being announced, right. which is kind of late. Normally at this right. point, we know who's speaking which day, which night. Probably the most interesting thing so far is who's not speaking. There's no George W. Bush. There's no Mitt Romney. There's no Herbert Walker Bush that's there. This is sort of a, a party that's you know, sort of fleeing its elite members right now. And so can Mr. Trump recover from that? That'll sort of be the question of the convention, I think. And even question whether the host governor, uh, John Kasich, will be there. Uh, Mary Taylor, lieutenant governor, told me right. last week there is an event one night for Kasich in Cleveland. He'll definitely right. be there. But whether he sets foot inside the queue remains to be seen. Yeah, from what I've heard, that's true for lots of governors. So they're sort of Nikki Haley, that's the case. Susanna Martinez, that's the case. They want to be there for the Republicans, but not there for Donald Trump. This says something. Well, never dull in 2016. Not at all. We know that. Mark Caleb Absolutely. Smith, always appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Katie. Silicon here on 5 on 2, a story that will make you proud to be from the Miami Valley. Kids saying thank you to police, a lot of local police. It's an example of what is working tonight. And you know, Pokemon Go, we've been talking a lot about it. It is super popular, but just how big? 
we have the new numbers. Might, uh, might surprise you. Keep it right here. 512 is just getting started. Survey says Pokemon Go is now the biggest mobile game in U.S. history. That is where we start our look at what is trending tonight. The new Pokemon attracted nearly 21 million daily users in the U.S. as of Tuesday. Candy Crush topped 20 million, so it was close, but it was bested. After three days of its release, more people were using Pokemon Go than Twitter, and it is expected to overtake Snapchat on Android in a few days. Mark, I thought maybe I'd get out of talking about Pokemon today on the nope. news. Dream on, Can't sister. Happen. Nope. Can't happen. <laughs> also trending today, Britain's Prince Harry got an HIV test today to encourage others to do the same. Footage of Harry being tested was also broadcast live on the Royal Family's Facebook page. With HIV rates in the UK continuing to rise, the 31-year-old royal decided to be tested publicly to help reduce the stigma that surrounds that disease. And next week, he'll be speaking at the World AIDS Conference to be held in South Africa. Bluebell ice cream introducing a new flavor tomorrow. At least that's the word the Texas based company says the new flavor will have its fans dancing in the grocery store aisles. I'm not sure if that's a clue, if that's uh, ringing any bells in your mind, but uh, that's all we know so far. Maybe they'll, flavor. Be they'll be dancing off the calories they get from <laughs> eating all that ice cream. Dancing. Still to come today here on Five on Two, the latest on Trump's possible running mate and how Clinton is working to bring in the Hispanic vote. More on Decision 2016 just ahead. And back to Pokemon, why of not, course. right? So, why Kettering police say be careful if you're playing that game because they could hand you a fine. And also be careful out on the roads. We've got some rain moving through right now. We can hear it on the roof here in Moraine. Uh, here's a live look at uh, I-70, Old Troy Pike. Things moving well there at this hour, but uh, it's a rainy rush hour, so take it easy. And Brian Davis has your forecast coming up.
Kentucky clerk Kim Davis, remember her? She's lost her appeal of contempt charges for failing to issue marriage licenses to same-sex couples. Back in 2015, a federal judge and the U.S. Supreme Court even ruled that despite her religious belief, she was required by federal law to issue those licenses. She, of course, refused and served six days in jail. But the court did finally lift an injunction against her, and a new Kentucky law that goes into effect tomorrow actually removes the need for her signature on that state's marriage licenses. The Republican National Convention starts Monday in Cleveland, but we will know well before then who Donald Trump has picked to be his VP. Edward Lawrence has tonight's Decision 2016 report. Well, thanks, Katie. Donald Trump says that he will make his pick for vice president officially at 11 a.m. tomorrow. Today, signs point to Indiana Governor Mike Pence as his running mate. Donald Trump calls Indiana Governor Mike Pence a good candidate. Increasing speculation points to Pence as Trump's vice presidential pick. He is one of three finalists that included New Jersey Governor Chris Christie and former House Speaker Newt Gingrich. My appeal is probably more national. I have some, some appeal in virtually every state. Uh, I think that Mike Pence would have a huge Midwestern appeal. I'm not going to say it won't bother me if I'm not selected. Of course it bothers you a little bit. Trump is making his selection as Supreme Court Justice Ruth Ginsburg apologized for talking about the presumptive Republican nominee. In a statement, she says her comments, quote, were ill-advised and I regret making them. Meanwhile, the presumptive Democratic nominee blasted Trump at a speech in Washington. Donald Trump is temperamentally unfit to be president of the United States. Hillary Clinton courted Hispanic voters, promising if elected, she'll push immigration reform with a path to citizenship. I want you to know I see you. I hear you and I am with you. Clinton wants to reverse the perception among voters that she's untrustworthy. A New York Times CBS poll shows 67% of voters don't trust her, partly because of the email controversy. That same poll shows the race a dead heat, with 40% of voters nationally supporting each candidate. In Washington, Edward Lawrence, 5 on 2. And don't forget, I'll be in Cleveland for you, bringing you complete coverage of the convention. So stay tuned to 2 News, both on air and online. Staying with politics, add author to the list of Bernie Sanders credentials. The Vermont senator and former presidential candidate has now signed a book deal with Thomas Dunn Books. The title, Sanders, Our Revolution, A Future to Believe In, will be coming out on November 15th. It will include both his policy ideas and a look back at his run for the White House. And parts of southeastern Pennsylvania got hit hard with heavy rain last night. These pictures are from Lancaster, where a flooded pasture forced all those cows to find higher ground. Emergency crews were also called in to rescue people from their flooded homes. Many areas reporting between uh, one to three feet of flood water. We're not getting that here, but we're getting some rain for mm -hmm. the second day in a row. And we do have a flood warning in effect, mm -hmm. yep. a flash flood warning in effect for parts of Montgomery County, the far western sections of Greene County around Beaver Creek and Fairborn. So watch out. We've had some heavy rain move through, and it's been coming down very quickly in a short period mm -hmm. of time. So it. that is the issue we're having. You know, we picked up about an inch of rain in about a 30-minute time frame and still some heavy rain falling. Let's take a look at the weather conditions this evening, and this is what we expect. Temperatures staying in the 70s. Still some of those showers around at 7 o'clock, but by 9 p.m., most of the rain should be be passing off of the southeast with partly cloudy skies down to 73 at 11 o'clock and then tomorrow at 8 o'clock 70 degrees 79 at noon 84 at 5 o'clock dry weather through the day with partly cloudy skies even becoming mostly sunny late day and we should see a drop in humidity levels especially by tomorrow afternoon but at least this evening some heavy showers out there some thunder still a possibility we do have that flash flood warning in effect for central Montgomery County into the western part of Greene County until 630. Surrounding that, a flood advisory. Watch out for standing water on the roadways. But when you're under a flash flood warning, if you know you're in a flood prone area and need to get to higher ground, don't drive through standing water on the roadways. Don't play in flooded roadways either. As I mentioned, turning less humid on Friday. Nice start to the weekend, though, on the way with lots of sunshine expected. Our severe weather index is low this evening because of the potential for heavy rain over the next couple of hours, but then that should move out of here. Speaking of heavy rain, that's what's falling right now in Beaver Creek on the stall. 
Tall Vision camera. You can see the wet conditions there on Interstate 675. As we look over toward the green, it looks like the rain's easing a bit now in downtown Dayton. Some showers to the south, a little bit of rain to the northeast there along State Route 4 and Valley. Uh, the, as we uh, look out into Green County, though, that's where we're seeing some of the heavy rain. Beaver Creek around Kettering, up toward uh, north of Xenia, uh, towards Ghost Station, and up to Yellow Springs. We've had some heavy rain move through over to Clifton and Cedarville, and this is all continuing to move eastward tonight. Now you can see some of the uh, Doppler estimates of rainfall here so far, about nine tenths of an inch, and some of the heavier pockets uh, located around Fairborn, back to Dayton, but all that falling in about a 30 minute time frame, and a little bit more rain still coming down out there. The showers extending southwestward into the northern part of Butler County. It doesn't look like the rain is quite as intense here, but still we'll monitor this for any additional flash flood warnings over the next hour or so. Otherwise, here comes our cold front, less humid conditions to the northwest, and as that pushes in, we're going to be in for some nice weather. Already getting some breaks in the clouds to the northwest after the rain moved through downtown. Uh, the rain has cooled things off 73 degrees, a southwest wind at 15, but a sticky 96% relative humidity. Still upper 80s to low 90s in the northern part of our region, still 87 at Wilmington, but you can see the impact of the rain cooled air there right along Interstate 70. Heat index numbers, mid and upper 80s to the north, still some low to mid 90s as you head south. Now we'll see the rain pass through the area this evening, then we get back to dry weather, and it looks like a fairly quiet weather pattern heading into Friday. Let's take a look at that forecast, and here's what we have on the way for tonight. Some evening showers, could be a couple of rumbles of thunder, and some locally heavy rain. We'll see that overnight low drop to 67 degrees. Tomorrow, partly sunny. It looks like it'll turn less humid during the day, and the high up to 84. A little bit of a breeze west at 10 to 15 miles an hour. 76 at 10 o'clock, 79 at noon, and into the mid-80s in the afternoon. Your Storm Team 2 seven-day forecast. Nice weather Saturday. Morning low 60 with a high of 80. Mostly sunny skies. Sunshine Sunday morning, partly cloudy in the afternoon, 88. Rain chances back on Monday, and temperatures pretty much what you expect for summer into next week. Okay, Brian, thanks so much. Kettering police are warning Pokemon Go users to only visit areas during normal operating hours. The department says officers have found several people in city parks after hours and around uh, closed businesses playing that game. So they're reminding all of us that Kettering parks are open from dawn until dusk. And if you are found in a park after hours, you'll be fined. Also tonight, little kids showing their support for law enforcement, delivering cards of encouragement to local officers in the wake of the Dallas shootings. Two News reporter Maytal Levy shows us a really nice example of what's working in the Miami Valley tonight. Three to five year olds at the Little Lambs Academy in Lebanon wanted officers to know they're appreciated. One teacher helped them spread that message. They can make us be safe. So when bad guys are here, then they can make them, like, not be biased. A classroom is working to make a difference. After five officers were killed in Dallas last week. Even one of the other little kids had said, you know, um, what if that was my dad? They're sending hundreds of messages showing support with personalized handprints. Thank you, please. To dozens of police departments throughout the Miami Valley. A lot, I can't even tell you, a lot. Nikki Moore, their teacher, says the students want officers to know they have backup. They came up with an idea to let the police know that not everyone is against them, that they do have support. One of her favorite moments since delivering cards to police stations, the Franklin Police Department giving her son an experience he'll never forget. They put him in handcuffs and threw him in their jail cell, <laughs> and he seemed to love it. She says kids are growing up in a difficult time having to learn shooting drills at school and living in fear. By having her students meet with officers, she's hoping it will ease the pain. Uh, we want you to come home safe to every night. You're a human being just like we are, and you're just there to do our job. So far, the kids have been to 39 police stations. They plan on delivering more this week. Maytal Levy, 5 on 2. And let's hope that's the only time that kid gets cuffed. Still to come on 5 on 2. High security for the RNC next week up in Cleveland, which local law enforcement agencies will be sending crews and officers north to help out. But first, Pokemon Go, of course, is so popular, but uh, a different app may be what parents are looking for. It's our video of the day next. And don't forget to tweet us using hashtag 5 on 2. We'll be right back.
I, I emailed it to um, everybody. For you, Allison. Okay, Pokemon may be the hottest app, but it's not everyone's speed. A New Jersey comedian has introduced a new spin on the game just for moms. What are you doing? Playing Chardonnay Go. No, you're not. This is my Chardonnay. <gasps> no! Come on! Come on! Comedian Dina Blizzard introduced the app Chardonnay Go. Players use their phones to hunt for glasses of wine hidden all over instead of those little digital Pokemon. Monsters. Well, why stop there? Let's do craft beer go and yeah. scotch go. I and see this really taking off. Bourbon go. I wish I had a dollar for every time I said Pokemon the That's last week. That's what I just told him. I know. I could buy my own bar. All right, still to come here on Five on Two. And has uh, patrols why you may start seeing more troopers as part of a six state initiative that begins on Sunday. Speaking of the roads, here's a live look at 675 and Indian Ripple. Despite the sometimes heavy rain right now, things moving well. Ryan's forecast coming up. If you are just joining us, welcome. We want to catch you up on our top five stories tonight here on Five on Two as we start a new half hour. And we are under a flash flood warning right now. And here's why. Take a look at the live Doppler 2 HD. You see that pretty well defined a line of storms moving uh, west to east across the Miami Valley uh, right now. It's going to be this way. Rain in the area for the next hour or two. Uh, but after that, a much better looking Friday. I'll let, you Brian, let Brian tell you about that shortly in the Storm Team 2 forecast.
Top story number two, a day of cleanup in Eden after Wednesday night's storm. Some of the biggest damage reported near Lexington Road and Barron Street. Glass shattered at a Speedway gas station there. All over town, though, tree limbs were downed. About 150 DPNL customers are still without power tonight. Top story number three, DNA from remains found in the woods near Elam Road in Greene County do not match any existing records, so the sheriff there now needs your help identifying those. We do know the remains are of a Caucasian woman aged 25 to 50 standing between 5'5 five, five and 5'10 five, but she was wearing a white tank top black pants with a pink heart and that may be the determining factor if you know anything about who this person is please call your local police a celebration of life in Dallas for Sergeant Michael Smith, one of the five Dallas police officers shot and killed in the line of duty last week. Smith was an Army veteran who served on the force, the Dallas force, for 28 years. Services for two more of the slain officers are tomorrow and Saturday. And finally, top story number five, Donald Trump's running mate. We will finally know for sure at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning. Tonight, uh, the Capitol Hill website roll call and some other media outlets reporting that Trump will choose Indiana Governor Mike Pence. It cites a Republican with direct knowledge of the decision, but no official confirmation yet from the Trump campaign. And that's a quick recap of our top five stories today. Police are searching for two men who they say held up a bank in Trotwood this morning. It happened at the Chase Bank in the 5500 block of Salem Avenue at about 9 a.m. Police say the suspects handed the teller a note, but no weapons were displayed. Officers want to hear from you if you know anything about the case. We're asking that anybody who can identify either of these two subjects to give us a call right away. We have some pretty good video and pretty good images of them that we believe that somebody should be able to recognize them. So if you have any information that could help lead to an arrest, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at the number you see here on your screen. And a man's in the hospital after being found beaten in Dayton. Police say a passerby found the man on Vincent Street and called police. He was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries, and that incident remains under investigation right now. Okay, back to the weather. Another active night on the radar. Um, looking, keeping our eye out for high water in certain parts of the Miami Valley. Yeah, flash flood warning is now in effect. Hopefully not as severe as we were at moments last night. We get the latest now with Brian Davis. Mark Katie, we're not expecting a repeat of the severe storms with the high winds, but we are getting some very heavy rain, very juicy air mass out there. We're squeezing out some of that water. Flash flood warning in effect until 6:30 for the Dayton area, extending over into the western part of Greene County. Surrounding that, a flood advisory until 7:45. Also up in eastern Logan County, where we've seen some heavy rain swing through. Doppler estimates of rainfall across the north central part of Montgomery County from about Dayton northward. You can see an excess of an inch, and a lot of the falling in about a 30 to 45 minute time frame. At least the heavy rain starting to move to the east. Now some of the heavier rains out into northern Greene County and the southern part of Clark County. But even that rain, as you can see, is uh, starting to move more down into the central part of Greene County. So some heavy rains along Interstate 675 extending southwestward into Butler County. This rain will all pass off to the southeast through this evening. At least a low threat of severe weather because of the heavy rain and the potential for some uh, flood at least some minor flooding, but only briefly this evening. And then after that, we're talking about some nice weather for the weekend. I'll have the details in your Storm Team 2 forecast.